at InfoStretch, we've been working with a number of different types of organizations in healthcare, both you know digital first and also more legacy type yeah. organizations who are all addressing digital in different ways. Um, and we're seeing a lot of back end uh, innovation happening, yeah. DevOps, which is a whole yeah. you know effort in and of itself. And but ultimately the the intent and the business objective behind all of these projects is to improve patient care, yeah. which is what you're talking about. Yeah. So there's a there's a constant both on the back end and I think what you guys are addressing is the front end yep. to leverage digital or to leverage you know technology yeah. to ultimately improve patient care. Right. Um, what is that? What are some of the barriers um, yeah. in the healthcare industry, being a highly regulated industry? What yeah. are some of the barriers that you guys are facing, or that you see yeah. being an issue um, to innovate and to be be able to do that? Really, if you think about the true barriers to innovation, um, I think there are fourfold. Mm -hmm. One is that it's only recently that anything has been digitized. Up until ten years ago, it was okay to be scheduled on a piece of paper. Now, capturing the patient record in an EHR. The second is the mindset. Mm -hmm. So just because I have an EHR, having an EHR is sort of like saying, uh, in, in the tech world, it's like saying, okay, we have an IBM mainframe and we've got some tools from Microsoft. There's so much innovation happening on top of this right. that the ability for healthcare institutions to look forward and say, yeah, I, I got an EHR, but that's sort of like the bottom layer of a cake. There's so many other layers I have to invest in. And no, my EHR is not going to do everything that, that there is to do because it's a great database, but that's what it is. It's a database of patient records. Mm -hmm. All the magic that's stored in the timestamps I have, in the patient information I have, needs to surface itself into fundamentally changing core processes, like scheduling, mm -hmm. right? And so when we think about uh, barriers to innovation, one is, are we gathering good data in our EHRs. Mm -hmm. Even if we're not, we can clean that up. Mm -hmm. Second, do we just assume our EHR is going to do everything? Mm -hmm. It's not. The third biggest barrier that I see is the decision-making process in most healthcare institutions is not quick. Mm -hmm. So you have to have 100 people can say no to innovation. Mm -hmm. All 100 have to say yes. And sometimes finding a champion who is forward thinking enough and who will um, fight that battle is, is not uh, easy. And the last one I say is that the role of uh, information technology, of AI, mm -hmm. of um, the governance structure around what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And some of it has to do with how historically IT has evolved in, in healthcare institutions. And the mandate has always been keep security up top. Always make sure everything is done internally by the EHR, and that's yeah. all we'll allow. So until that mindset changes, it'll always be a little bit of a struggle. I would and think. I think some of this touched upon what we're observing is disparate technologies being able to work together yeah. is one is one area that's been a, a challenge. But also disparate groups, different yeah. you know divisions within the institution being able to you know, effectively work together seamlessly to, right. to adopt some of these new processes as well as the new technology. I'll give you an example of each. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, EHRs are supposed to be open systems. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to provide interoperability. Mm -hmm. And they're getting there. Mm -hmm. But even without them being interoperable fully, you can still extract data from them and do a lot of what we do. Mm -hmm. Right? So we don't need them to be fully open. We don't right. need them to be Google. They can be Apple. Right. That's more, more of a closed garden. So the technologies uh, that now exist, whether it's extracting data simply through a SFTP poll, a data extract, or HL7, or FHIR, are all moving in the right direction. So that right. barrier will keep getting lower. The second barrier, though, is, for example, to give you uh, uh, an example that I think everyone can relate to, budgeting is done in silos. But patient care is not done in silos. Right. A patient goes through, navigates through the front of a hospital to the back of a hospital, right? They see their clinician, then they go into the OR, they get uh, labs done, et cetera, et cetera. And if you look at how departmental budgeting is done, if you are trying to innovate across departments, you've got to get multiple depart departments to say, this makes sense for us to do as an institution, mm -hmm. and let's find budget for it. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, both of them are very real barriers. Right, absolutely. And um, having been in technology in, in the big 
dot com heyday um, and seeing another sort of technology revolution with digital. I guess the first part of my question is, you know, what's what's different now right. than what, and, and it's not pertaining to healthcare; it's just in, in no. general. And the second part of the question is, if you were to take your, you know, your crystal ball out and and tell us what's going to happen in the next right. five years, right. maybe for healthcare, but in general, as as a technologist yourself, um, what what would some of the observations be that you have? Yeah. So. I think uh, government, education, and healthcare are late to the digital game. I don't yeah. think I'll be the first or the last person to say that. It's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, it's the macro uh, factors of uh, efficiency is no longer a nice to have, it's a must have. Mm -hmm. We cannot, as a country that keeps spending as much as we do on healthcare, Medicare is clamping down on how much you receive per knee replacement, for example. These are very real forces. So in any industry, the forces that drive change happen at different times. So it's easy for us to say, oh, healthcare is behind, but there's a reason for it. The macro, uh, re until it hurts my pocketbook in a deep way, mm -hmm. most people don't do much. And so you've now found an industry, technology, for example, felt that pinch 25 years ago. Amazon came up 30 years ago and so, or 25 years ago and started hitting every retailer. And that's why the need for efficiency. Mm -hmm. That's only now starting to happen in healthcare, which is why this is happening. That's one big driver from a macro perspective. From a more micro perspective, more data is now available because of these EHRs. The third is, from a leadership perspective, Every person in a hospital, when they leave the hospital, uses OpenTable and Facebook and Snapchat and LinkedIn and every other digital tool, and they go into the hospital and they say, oops, I'm back in the dark ages, 20 years ago, yeah. right? They go into an, uh, an airport and they have a pretty smooth uh, transition through an airport, but a transition through a hospital requires, you know, all kinds of special treatment for people. Those business models that have been adopted in other industries yeah. can also be adopted. We use OpenTable as a metaphor for some of the things we do. Right. to show access to open time for surgeons to ask for it. So so some of the broad macro changes in other industries, device capabilities, computing mm -hmm. capabilities, user interface capabilities, where I expect my patients to be able to use these devices to do things. Mm -hmm. If Apple gets to the point which it will assume where I can measure my blood pressure and take you know um, a diabetes test right on my phone, mm -hmm. it would change so much because a lot of those uh, the growth in when I need to go see a doctor can now happen at home. But you don't think that's going to compromise the quality of care that you're going to get because you're they're only looking at your data, but they're not seeing you and they're not seeing right. you in person. And so I, I'm a big believer that in the end, um, markets tend to shift towards a supply demand balance of the highest quality at whatever price point is affordable. Right. So for some people, um, it's okay that you know, I'm not being holistically looked at inside out. Right. Um, because I'm 25 years old, I don't have great insurance, and I'm not that sick, right? Yeah. I'm not suggesting by any means that's a good thing. It's hard to foretell how the market will play out, but like in every industry, you will have segments that are willing to take the lower cost, faster option, and that may be okay, because eventually we'll have to move to some sort of segmentation like that. Well, that's that's very insightful. Thank you so much for your time, Sanjeev. Is there anything else that I missed that you'd like to add? No, I, I, I will just say that I'm very fortunate to work in an industry that has uh, mission meaning and money. Yeah. Frankly, the uh, by shaving off a, uh, if you look at Amazon and what it's done, I'm a big believer that Amazon has single-handedly kept U.S. inflation in check, probably mm -hmm. to the extent of one percentage point. A lot of that's happened because of the intense competition for the same uh, set of goods and the pricing that results as, as uh, a result of that. For us, we're in a very privileged position to be able to provide tools that cause, at least to some extent in healthcare, the same kind of efficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a fun next 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I will think of you next time I can efficiently go through that whole process. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, uh, and this concludes uh, this episode of DTV. Thank you all for joining. And if you're passionate about digital transformation and want to come on our show, please don't hesitate to contact us at DTV at infostretch.com. We would love to have you on. I want my DTV!